on WRFP LP 101.9 FM. The Old Clerk City Council meeting is now in session. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council Member Anderson? Here. Beaton? Here. Berge? Christofferson? Here. Emmanuel? Here. Gregert? Here. Klinkhammer? Here. Lore? Here. Weld. Here. Worthman. Here. Jean. Here. Berge. Here. Great. Uh, congratulations, or uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome uh, to our Tuesday, April 28th legislative session of the Eau Claire City Council. Again, I want to welcome everyone that's listening to us via WebEx. Um, during our legislative session this afternoon, the council members will be par participating either remotely or in person to deliberate and take action on the agenda items before us today. City staff and council members have spent a great deal of time preparing for this meeting and I have a sincere appreciation for their continued work and dedication to this community. I also want to thank Valley Media Works and their devoted staff for live streaming this meeting this afternoon. To watch, please visit valleymediaworks.org or visit channel 994 on Spectrum Cable. The first item this afternoon on our agenda is an update from City Manager Peters regarding COVID-19. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Peters. Good afternoon, Council President Weld, and uh, Council members that are in chambers and also uh, online. Thank you uh, for uh, being here today. It's uh, our second set of meetings fully uh, online, and uh, we're still working on a few bugs with some things here, but uh, we'll, we're, we're making it work. So thank you, and good afternoon. Uh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, I believe on the online slides are uh, there's the ways in which you can get information. One of the ways to address the COVID-19 uh, crisis is to be informed. And one of the very best ways to stay informed is to be in touch with our incident command system, which is being led by Facebook Easy in our health department. And there's several ways you can do that. You can look on the uh, website, which is coronavirus Eau Claire, um, healthdepartment.org, uh, uh, although that website is actually going to be have a significant revamp and upgrade starting tomorrow, but there'll be links to from other websites to that, um, and that's going to be a website that is solely dedicated to our response to the COVID-19 in the local Clear area. There's also, and very importantly, live updates every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3.30, uh, and those can be found, they're live streamed. You can find them, again, through the health department website where most of the major media outlets also have a, a link directly to the, uh, the live feed. And if that doesn't help you with the information you need, there's a call center. And that call center phone number is 715-831-7425. And that's 715-831-7425. Uh, and they're operating during uh, regular business hours. Uh, and you're able to, uh, to have some questions that you might have related to the COVID-19 response to Claire there. And finally, there's a social media presence on Facebook uh, and a hashtag Stop the Spread DC. So several different ways that uh, people can stay informed about the work that's being done uh, to address the COVID-19 crisis in the city of Eau Claire and in the region. Two things that I'd like to talk to you about tonight and update you on. One is the Community-Wide Economic Development Task Force. Um, this was a task force that was uh, uh, kicked off late last week, 
And um, it's a joint effort between Eau Claire County, the city of Eau Claire, the city of Altoona, the incident command structure for the COVID-19, and all of our area economic development agencies. And all of these uh, folks have uh, joined together to form a task force that is not under the umbrella of any one government agency or any one economic development agency or any one uh, organization. It is a, a structure that is going to be populated by people all across uh, our community and bringing different talents to address uh, how we uh, have an economic uh, recovery from the, uh, the, the COVID-19 crisis. It's intended to position us for re-entry and as I said, it crosses uh, government business, uh, 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 higher education and also economic development agencies. There are four areas of focus with this task force. One is providing uh, business assistance for our local community businesses. Two is communication, and that's communication, communicating the work of the task force itself, and also community promotion and helping the community uh, regain its footing uh, and, and, um, and, and position itself well as we, uh, as hopefully we come out the backside of, not if, but when we come out the backside of uh, the COVID-19 crisis. The third uh, focus of the task force is sector recovery. And we've got well over a dozen sectors that have been uniquely identified. And each one of the, within each one of those sectors, they'll be working to have a coordinated response to the health recommendations so that uh, that entire sector can come online uh, in a coordinated way that's consistent with the health recommendations and also work within that sector to help that sector re-enter uh, the, the business community and be successful as it re-engages. The fourth area of focus then is employee-employer exchange, and that's uh, amplifying and, and continuing to work uh, on some of the workforce development issues that have been ongoing before the COVID-19 crisis, uh, but we want to uh, accelerate some of that work to have employee and empl basically employees who are looking for work and employers that need employees uh, can find a match plus retraining efforts. The task force has several objectives. Um, they want to provide consistent enhanced um, based guidance to the business community. We want to facilitate the financial resources. We want to promote the community, connect employers, employees, make sure that we ha have assured the health and safety of employers, employees, and the people who are participating in our local commerce, as well as minimizing the impact of disease. There are some deliverables. We want this to happen in one location, and, and of course that's a cyber location for the most part. Make sure that there's timely, accurate, practical, and relevant guidance that is being implemented consistently throughout the community, that we provide very specific sector support, that there's an effective communication plan, and that it's connecting uh, the employers together within our community. We also thought it was important with this tax force that it's guided by some principles. And there are four guiding principles for this task force. The first is recognizing and understanding that the distancing and closing closure orders have worked and they have slowed the spread of disease and they have impacted uh, the ability of our healthcare community to respond to the crisis. It also recognizes that the physical distancing and closure policies have slowed the, uh, the spread, uh, but they've also paid a heavy price in our local economy. And then through that, we want to use strategic data-driven approaches for how we will reopen. And probably the fourth principle, which is a very important one, is that this work will be done through the parameters that are provided to us by the, uh, the direction at the state and the federal level, and that's what we're going to be applying at the local level. So the task force is not going to be involved with trying to figure out um, uh, when to, uh, to reopen and what the criteria are or the metrics are. That's for the folks at the federal and the state level to figure out. But once those have been established, we are going to make sure that those are implemented well and effectively at the local level so that our businesses uh, can come out of this strong and, uh, and thrive. So that's a little bit about the task force. Um, and before perhaps I move on to uh, just a little bit of an update on some of the things we've been doing as a city and our response actions, I would take any questions that you might have on the task force itself. Does council have any questions for Mr. Peters in regards to the task force? Council Member Christofferson. Thank you, President Weld. Um, I wonder if you would remind us how people become involved in those uh, sector leaders' leadership roles. 
Sure. So there's several ways uh, you can. So the chamber has been collecting. So any one of the economic development agencies that are involved. So actually the sectors are going to be. Uh, the sector redevelopment is going to be led by the leadership of the Eau Claire Area Economic Development Corporation, uh, the chamber, uh, as as well as the. Um, 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 uh, the, the staff at the city of Eau Claire, so our own economic development uh, staff. So any business could reach out to any one of those three economic development agencies and, and have their name funneled in that way. Uh, or they could reach out uh, to myself um, and or uh, Catherine Schroff at the county or Mike Golat at the city. Uh, or the co-chairs for this task force are Mark Fannis and um, Greg Moore. And so uh, they'd be able to reach out to either of them. So any one of those pathways are a way to get uh, get your name or express interest in participating in the task force. Good question. Thank you. Councilmember Zhang. Thank you, Council President. Um, thank you so much, Mr. City Manager Dale. Um, first off, I want to express that this is such an amazing and a great idea for this task force. I'm very excited that... Um, Eau Claire is proactive about putting together a task force such as this. And so my question would be, do you have to be a business owners in, in order to be on a task force? I know that we have um, many business owners in town that are marginalized who don't necessarily maybe have the um, lingual means to be on the task force, but would have representation. Um, I'm just curious if you could speak a little bit to that. Uh, no, they do not need to be business owners. In fact, uh, certainly within the uh, uh, the area of getting fiscal and financial advice to businesses, uh, are, that's going to be coming through some uh, folks that are not business owners. Uh, the communication piece uh, are generally not business owners, and the employer-employee piece is not business owners. And, if, and, and even within the business sectors, uh, we have uh, participation uh, from the university, from the tech school, um, and from you know different segments of, of the community. So the answer is no, you do not have to be a business owner to participate in the task force. Thank you. Councilmember Gregor. Yeah, thank you, uh, President Weld. Um, Mr. Peters, the, I guess my question is about the, um, about how folks in the public as well as council members can kind of be up to date on the work of the task force, such as a, a central website or meeting minutes or things like that. Is, is that going to be kind of stored in one place so we're able to, to stay up to date? Absolutely. So, uh, in fact, there's a template uh, uh, web page that is already being developed. Uh, there's been a logo, actually, that was developed in the last two days. And the website that I referred to that the health department is launching tomorrow, which is a standalone website for the, uh, for the response, is also going to be where all the work of the task force is housed. So I don't have the address for that. It launches tomorrow. Um, and, uh, but it's, it, it's going to be one-stop shop, one place, where all of the health-related information and guidance that we have from our incident command system, as well as all of the work of the task force, is going to be housed in the one website, which launches tomorrow. Any other questions from council? Councilmember Beaton. Uh, yes, I, I just wanted to also express my gratitude uh, to uh, City Manager Peters and the whole task force. Um, I've gotten a lot of feedback from our um, our business leaders and small business leaders in the city about um, about how hard it is right now to navigate uh, the different resources and the different options that they have. And so I'm I'm really um, glad that this is coming together as as a resource for our whole community. Thank you for that. I, I would be remiss if I, I just want to point out that this is a very, very much a team effort uh, with, with a wide variety of, of, of leaders in the government sector and in the private sector that have been joining together to, to make this idea and the concept a, a reality uh, for our community. Looks like that's all the questions. Okay. Then uh, 
Thank you for that. Uh, just real quickly then, uh, since our last, uh, last update uh, two weeks ago, there have been three uh, initiatives that have gone forward under the uh, Executive uh, Emergency Authority, and I just wanted to review those three with you. Uh, the first is uh, we've made an adjustment to the parking contract. So in our, uh, in our parking ramps, we have um, businesses that have contracts to, uh, to pay the city of Eau Claire for a certain number of parking stalls. And uh, for businesses that have closed completely, we're going to waive uh, their parking fees uh, for the month of April and May. And if the business is partially open, we're going to uh, reduce their parking contract fees in half. Uh, so it's, you know, uh, it's just a way of, of helping our businesses uh, in town that are closed and have, a, you know, a, a cost with us uh, for the parking contracts uh, to help them with, uh, with that particular expense uh, within their, their budgets. The second adjustment that we've made is we now have uh, every employee, both uh, uh, there's, there are terms in the, in the legal world now related to, uh, to uh, COVID-19 of essential and non-essential. And uh, we now have created an 80-hour bank of leave balance that's available for all employees, regardless of their status, uh, within, within the, uh, the federal law. And that's an 80-hour bank that's available for COVID-related issues. And there's a set of definitions in terms of how that can be used. And that's in addition to the sick leave balances and benefits that we have and vacation leave balances and benefits that we have. And then the third, uh, third initiative that we've taken in the last two weeks uh, was to uh, defer the, the city portion of certain uh, license renewal fees and to waive the fees um, through the end of the year. So um, there, are, there are certain licensing fees that have a state component and a local component, and we have uh, deferred the payment on the city portion till the end of the year uh, for those license renewals that are, that are coming up, and then, of course, waiving any late fees. Um, and then the last thing I would just point out is that uh, later on your agenda is a, uh, a request to extend the emergency declaration until 5 o'clock on May 26th. Uh, that will coincide with the governor's uh, order, um, and it basically extends the emergency declaration that you have in place that is ex actually expiring today, um, but would extend it through, uh, through May 26th. And with that, I would uh, entertain any questions that you have. Any questions from Council? Council Member Emanuel. Thank you so much, Council President Wells. Uh, thank you, Mr. Peters, for the presentation, of course. And a question for you around the 80 hours COVID leave. Is that um, in accordance with the federal guidance or is that a, just a separate city allocated pool? And then my uh, follow-up question is the rate of pay for that 80 hours COVID leave full or is it prorated? So to the first part, it is, that it is in compliance with the law, but it's actually an expansion of the law. So the law would have that benefit available for only the, uh, the non-essential employees, and we're expanding it at a local level to include the, uh, the uh, essential workers, and it is at, uh, to the second part of your question, it is at the full rate of pay. Thank you, and can I ask a follow-up question? Certainly. Thank you. Are there any employees that would not qualify for this COVID leave, 80 hours? Uh, no. It's pro, for part-time employees, it's prorated, um, but, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, so, but no, it's, it's available at least on a prorated basis for all employees. Okay, and this is people can use this for child care um, if they need to take care of somebody. I mean, can you just share a little bit about how the city expanded the provision as well? You know, so this this is for the COVID related related care. So that if you if you have the disease or uh, or if you're ordered to be quarantined um, um, or I'm sorry isolated uh, or if there's some order related to that. Um, so it, it is following the federal definition of the of the uh, of the COVID leave, but what we expanded was the the definition to uh, to be for the, the the essential workers in in addition to the non-essential workers. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for City Manager Peters from Council? I 
I don't see any. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Uh, next on our agenda is the consent agenda. Does council have any questions regarding the consent agenda or wish to remove any item for separate consideration? Councilmember Emanuel. Sorry, forgot to put my hand down. Thank oh, you. Okay. Uh, seeing no questions or request to remove an item, and on a motion by Councilmember Anderson and seconded by Councilmember Klinkhammer, the consent agenda is moved and discussion is in order. Is there any discussion regarding the consent agenda? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. Gregert? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Zhang? And the consent agenda has been passed. We have several proclamations this afternoon, four actually. Um, and if I could have City Clerk Repel and Mr. Kerner meet me at the front podium, we will present our first proclamation, uh, which is in regards to our election earlier this, this month. So, uh, it was recommended by Councilmember Anderson, actually, that we somehow recognize um, the idea of what this election looked like and could look like and, and then how, how it ended up to be and, and, and the success that it was in a very challenging time um, in our lives and obviously um, you know, we probably would have preferred, preferred not to, to have it due to situations, but because we were required to have it, um, we thought it was important that we recognize everyone that made that so successful. So whereas on April 7th, 2020, the city of Eau at the direction of Wisconsin Supreme Court held the spring election in the midst of a world pandemic. And whereas, although a challenging situation, the election staff and poll workers proceeded with the election process with compassion, civility, professionalism, and grace. And whereas the residents voting and the workers staffing each of our 20 polling sites exercised a cooperative spirit and a courteous patience with both the process and with their neighbors involved. And local businesses and nonprofit organizations stepped in and stepped up to act as a regular and emergency polling locations for this essential public service. And whereas election staffs worked nearly 2,000 hours preparing for the election and 240 others, including city employees from all departments and divisions, civilian dressed National Guard members, and specially trained community members worked early hours, late hours, and long hours to ensure the voting process was accessible, safe, and fair to all. And whereas city employees used their can-do spirits with creativity and ingenuity to fabricate and develop special safety equipment and process guidelines for this important event and process 18,000 votes, including 15,000 requests for absentee ballots. And whereas those working and those voting that day with a great sense of pride never lost sight of the goal to provide residents the opportunity to exercise the constitutional right to vote during this unprecedented, challenging time. Now, therefore, I, Terry Well, President of the Eau Claire City Council, on behalf of the entire City Council and the citizens of Eau Claire, do hereby with great pride recognize, appreciate, and celebrate all the employees, poll workers, volunteers, and citizens who participated in the pre-election work and the election day process for the city of Eau Claire. Thank you very much. Would you like to share 
two words? Sure. Uh, I would just like to say thank you to all of our poll workers and all of our poll sites. We were very fortunate to have everybody come together the way that they did. And even the people who, for various reasons, couldn't work, many of them let us know well ahead of time so that we could try to find replacements. So we were very fortunate and we reached out to the city workers and we had a lot of help from our custodians, from streets, CMF, fire, and the police. And really we were able to come together and put together just enough to be able to do it correctly. So thank you for all of them. And then thank you to the election staff who are exceptionally talented and dedicated workers and they worked extremely hard to process all of those applications. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our, our next proclamation is in recognition of the 50th annual Earth Day. And if I could have Mr. Fickinger join us up here at the podium. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Whereas a sound natural environment is the foundation of a healthy society and a robust economy, whereas there are sound economic, environmental, and social reasons for local governments and their communities to engage in sustainability, and whereas cities like Eau Claire can do much to reverse environmental degradation, degradation and contribute to building a healthy society for addressing issues such as climate change, energy use, food systems, overconsumption, transportation, urban sprawl, water pollution, and waste prevention. And whereas the city of Eau Claire has made several commitments towards this end, pledged to carbon neutrality and 100% and 100% renewable energy by 2050, adopted a sustainability chapter, a renewable energy action plan, and the city's comprehensive plan developed an electric vehicle roadmap with a 15% fleet, EV goal by 2030, became an eco municipality, an eco municipality, adopting the four system conditions of the natural step, became a member of the DNR statewide green tier legacy Commun communities program, and created a sustainability advisory committee to undertake such work. And the City of Eau Claire encourages residents, businesses, and institutions to use Earth Day to celebrate the Earth and commit to building a sustainable society by taking part in programs and projects that enhance our community's natural environment and quality of life. Now, therefore, I, Terry Wall, President of the Eau Claire City Council, on behalf of the entire City Council, do proclaim Tuesday, April 22, 2020, is the 50th annual Earth Day in the city of Eau Claire and support the amazing Eau Claire Cleanup Act and that to be scheduled at a later date as a way that these community members can take part in sustaining our natural environment. Thank you very much. Uh, just a few words, um, Ned Noel typically would be here to accept this, but uh, being that uh, he's, he's away right now, he asked me to uh, stand in for him. But 50 years, uh, certainly, I think everybody knows Gaylord Nelson was the uh, originator of the uh, first Earth Day, and he's from Wisconsin, uh, was a state representative for the state of Wisconsin. But it also was a precursor to the Clean uh, Water Act and Clean Air Act that eventually cleaned up our, our our earth for us and something that we continue to move on every day and projects that we do we always look at uh, opportunities where we can uh, make Eau Claire a better place and um, I accept this on Ned's behalf so thank you. Thank you. We'll also ask Mr. Pippinger uh, to join us for this next proclamation which is in recognition of Arbor Day whereas in 1872 J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. 
And Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. Whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source, source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas Eau Claire has, recognized, has been recognized as a tree city, USA by the National Arbor Foundation for the past 41 years and desires to continue its tree planting ways. Now therefore I, Terry Weld, President of the Eau Claire City Council, on behalf of the entire City Council, do hereby proclaim Friday, April 24, 2020, as Arbor Day in the City of Eau Claire, and I urge all citizens to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands and to support our city's urban forestry program. And further, I urge all citizens to plant trees, to gladden the hearts, and promote the well-being of present and future generations. Thank you very much. Just a few words of thanks. Uh, Typically, we have our forestry division crew up here, and they typically are coming right out of the trees at that time. Uh, many of them are still in their their uniform for the day, and I'll accept this on them on their behalf. But uh, if you recall, last year there's only one other community in the state of Wisconsin that has received this award more than than the city of Eau Claire. So. Uh, with over 33,000 boulevard trees in, in our city, along with the tens of thousands of other trees that we have within our parks and our open spaces. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pickens. And our thanks to all of your staff and appreciation. Our last proclamation uh, is in recognition of Creative Economy Week. Begin with uh, the um, Mr. Olson maybe joining us afterwards, so not here in person, but, but virtually. So we look forward to that. Uh, the proclamation reads as follows: Whereas the City of Eau recognizes that investments in our creative economy and the arts are important to the health and vibrancy of our community and its future, and whereas the City of Eau appreciates that the strength of our creative economy is directly related to the economic vitality of our community. And the city of Eau Claire celebrates that all residents have a hand in making Eau Claire a creative destination through their contributions as producers and consumers. And the city of Eau Claire recognizes that investment in the creative economy is critical for our city and state's success for those reasons. For these reasons, the arts mean business drive tourism, and add to the economy. The arts speak creativity and innovation. The arts have social impact. Now therefore I, Terry Wald, President of the Eau Claire City Council, on behalf of the entire City Council and citizens of Eau Claire, do proclaim the week of May 9 through the 16th, 2020, as Creative Economy Week in the City of Eau Claire and encourage residents to celebrate and promote the arts and creativity in our community. Mr. Olson does have some words that I will share, and then he may, he may uh, add a few more words uh, afterwards. So downtown Eau Claire has been working with a coalition of community members, including representatives from the Public Arts Council, the City of Eau Claire Economic Development, and the members of the Eau Claire's Creative Economy to commemorate Creative Economy Week here in Eau Claire. Creative Economy Week is presented statewide in partnership with Arts Wisconsin and the League of Wisconsin Municipalities to shine a spotlight on community engagement through the arts, creative opportunities, and the arts and creativity as an investment for Wisconsin. We are fortunate to have a vibrant local creative economy in Eau Claire. We all contribute to it, whether as producers or consumers. 
In 2019, the state of Wisconsin's creative industries had, nine, had a 9.7 billion annual economic, 9.7 billion dollar annual economic impact and employed more than 94,000 people. The week of May 9 through the 16th will showcase and explore creative endeavors and processes within our community. While social distancing has changed, how we can all get together to celebrate art, the community has planned a number of digital engagements, including a compilation of local performances on their YouTube channel, digital gallery tours, and online panel discussions. The economic impacts from COVID-19 are felt significantly, significantly by our artists and creators, and we hope that this week is a time that the City of Eau Claire can come together to engage and support an important part of our local economy and culture. I think I need to unmute Mr. Olson here. Mr. Olson, are you there? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? We can. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for proclaiming the week of May 9th to the 16th um, as Creative Economy Week. Uh, it's very meaningful to have your support. Um, and then just in addition to your remarks, I also want to um, just recognize the organizations that have contributed to the planning of this year's uh, Creative Economy Week. We had to get a little more creative than we maybe had anticipated uh, due to COVID-19. Um, but just wanted to recognize that um, a number of organizations have come together to plan these activities that we have digitally planned uh, for the week. So uh, 200 main art and wine, uh, Chippewa Valley Tours, Pablo Center at the Confluence, uh, Gala Day Gallery, Tangled Up in Q, Collab, Ambient Inks, The Sculpture Tour, uh, Chippewa Valley Theater Guild, uh, Vince Eau Claire, and of course, support from the city of Eau Claire as well as downtown Eau Claire, Inc. Um, and you know, as, as was mentioned, a lot of these organizations have been profoundly affected um, by the shutdowns due to COVID-19. And so we hope that as we celebrate our arts and the contributions that they make to the community, that uh, we will keep them in mind as we all work together to support those who have been affected and, and to move forward. Uh, but thank you again for your support. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Again, congratulations. Again, thanks to everybody that, that we recognize today. Obviously, a lot still going on in our community, and we're appreciative of that. Um, so let's get started with our business agenda, if everyone's ready. Um, we'll begin with agenda item number nine, which is a resolution authorizing the sale of lot 19 Sky Park to Five Stars Plastic Incorporated. And again, if you'll give me just one moment. Good afternoon, Ms. Basin. Ms. Basin, are you there? Ms. Basin? Ms. Basim, are you there? Terry, if need be, I, I'm sorry, Council President Weld, if need be, I could provide information on this item. Okay, uh, certainly. Why don't you go ahead, uh, City Attorney Nick? Thank you. Uh, the uh, the, the basic overview on, on this is it's a lot, a lot 19 in Sky Park, uh, Five Star Plastics is interested in seeking a, um, uh, a sale of that property. Um, I don't know if Ms. Basim had uh, provided a map, but I know I've seen a map and assisted her in developing uh, the potential sale agreement uh, and option period for this parcel. And it involves um, uh, a lot that's in the southeastern corner of Sky Park has been a difficult one to market and that we're um, 
we're pleased Sky Park um, uh, Five Star Plastics is potentially interested in uh, for an expansion of their operations. So we would recommend it to you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Nick. Uh, is there any questions from council in regards to this item? Seeing none, then on a motion by Council Member Beaton and seconded by Council Member Zhang, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. Gregert? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Um, this is Councilmember Beaton. I believe that Councilmember Worthman is hidden again, a hidden attendee, and can't unmute himself. Zhang? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Worthman? Okay, and that item passes. Um, looks like Andrew, I'm gonna try again. Worthman? All right, uh, and that item passes unanimously. Uh, agenda item number 10 is a resolution authorizing 2019 budget adjustments, 2019 to 2020 year end carryovers and 2020 first quarter budget adjustments. Because this item amends the budget a two thirds vote or eight affirmative votes is needed for passage. We will try Ms. Basin again. She's still here on that. Yeah, she's here. Okay. Miss Basim, are you there? Miss Basim, are you there? She does have her hand raised. Yeah, there she is. Miss Basim? What's that? Okay. All right, Ms. Basim, are you there? Mr. Winzans, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council President Weld, members of the City Council. Uh, before you uh, this afternoon uh, is a resolution that appropriates a just and approves uh, carryovers uh, to the 2019 and 2020 uh, budgets. I'll go through each one of these categories briefly. Uh, first of all, the resolution makes various appropriations in the 2019 budget. Um, even though we're past 2019, uh, there were uh, various uh, grants um, that were received late in 2019. Uh, that uh, still need to be appropriated, um, and those are listed uh, in the uh, memorandum. Uh, we also need to make various uh, year-end budget adjustments to the 2019 uh, budget for uh, various um, programs and activities that uh, exceeded their uh, expenditure authority. Uh, the first of those uh, being uh, the fire department, and I should note that uh, this is primarily due to uh, year-end accruals that occurred actually after the year was complete, so it was very difficult to predict what those accruals may be. We're going to try to do a better job of that 
uh, next year and assisting the fire department with uh, what those uh, personnel accruals may be. Uh, we also need uh, supplemental appropriations for the Hobbs Ice Center, Fairfax and Fairfax Pool. Both of those uh, appropriations will be coming from uh, the uh, non-departmental budget uh, within the general fund. Uh, additionally, uh, we received uh, more room tax in 2019 than we anticipated, so we need to appropriate those funds and pass 70% uh, of those dollars on through to visit Eau Claire in accordance with our agreement. Uh, further on down the list, uh, the uh, cemetery needs a supplemental appropriation from uh, the non-departmental uh, general fund budget. And then several other budgets uh, need appropriations from their uh, fund balances. Those include the stormwater utility, uh, as well as central equipment and uh, hazardous materials. Uh, within the parking fund, uh, we need to uh, increase uh, the transfer to TID number eight uh, because of increased parking revenues. Uh, the uh, revenues that come into the uh, Barstow ramp are shared uh, because uh, three quarters of that ramp uh, was constructed with uh, dollars from TID number eight. And last, uh, we need to actually decrease the overall general fund budget by $400,000 in order to uh, bring the budget back into compliance uh, with the expenditure restraint program. And that is a program uh, uh, that uh, where we receive approximately $1.1 million annually from the state of Wisconsin uh, by complying with the limits uh, in uh, an annual expenditure increases. So those are the uh, additional, those are the adjustments to the 2019 budget. We also have a couple of carryovers, uh, carryover requests to the 2019 uh, budget that would be carried over to 2020. These are primarily for grants and donations that were received um, that uh, where the uh, grant period uh, goes uh, across fiscal years. Uh, so we've got uh, uh, those within the health department, uh, within community services for the lead service line program, within the fire department for an EMS grant, uh, within the library for various grants and donations, and then in the transit fund for the transit development plan. So that is not yet complete and we need to carry over the funds to be able to pay for that. Um, then we've also got a couple of uh, year-end budget carryovers for capital within the water utility and within land buildings and equipment. And then last but not least, our uh, 2020 first quarter budget adjustments. And these uh, are for uh, various grants and donations within the health department. And then in TID number 13, which is the cannery redevelopment area, and that is the development incentive for the cannery trail residences, which coincidentally, um, we were notified um, today uh, by the Wisconsin Housing Economic Development Agency that uh, Cannery Trail Residences application for WIDA low-income housing tax credits was approved. So that was the only application uh, from the city of Eau Claire uh, that, uh, that was approved. Just kind of as a side note, um, all of these adjustments, uh, especially the ones uh, uh, to uh, various uh, funds and uh, within the general fund, indicate or I guess are indicative of the reason that it's very important for us to maintain some flexibility within uh, within the general fund when we budget because we budget based upon averages and sometimes budgets go up, sometimes budgets go down. Uh, we did receive uh, actual uh, year-end numbers uh, yesterday from, uh, from our accounting staff and uh, we had a planned drawdown of fund balance of approximately $5.4 million for capital projects in 2019. Uh, the actual drawdown of fund balance was about $2.57 million. So uh, through over-realization of revenues and under-expending budgets, we were able to offset about $2.8 million uh, of the planned drawdown of fund balance. Um, and just on the expenditure side, uh, in terms of 2019 budget performance, uh, we underexpended the budget by approximately 2.2%. So even though we're talking about millions of dollars, really in, in terms of a percentage of the total budget, 
it's really a relatively small amount. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Winzans. Is there questions from Council? Councilmember Berge. Thank you, Council President. And thank you, Mr. Winzans. I have a question about uh, the last item, or the first part, the, um, the 400,000 from, it looks like, so just so I understand, from the general fund to be in compliance with the um, ERP program, so we have to take it out of the general fund and then it's going to the Police Detective Bureau and Admin Personal Services. If that understanding is correct, um, why was that picked? That, that it, department? It, it, yes, it's, uh, it's a good question, uh, Council Member Berge. It's actually being taken out of the uh, Police Department uh, Detective Bureau Personnel Services. Um, we have to reduce the budget somewhere. That happened to be a, a, a program within our budget that had sufficient funding available where we could reduce that budget uh, by that amount in order to bring uh, the entire general fund back into compliance with the expenditure restraint program. Does that answer your question? Yes, it, I had it backwards. Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Berge. Is there any other questions from Council? Uh, seeing none, uh, on a motion then by Councilmember Lohr and seconded by Councilmember Christofferson, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Uh, seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Berge. Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. Gregert? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Zhang? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Worthman? Right. That item passes 10 to 0. Agenda item number 11 is a resolution appointing the position of writer in residence for the city of Eau Claire. Uh, Ms. Small from the Ellie Phillips Library, are you there? Ms. Small? Ms. Small? Ms. Small, are you there? Yes, now that I'm... Am I unmuted? Yep, you're unmuted. I don't think so. Okay, all right, cool. It still had a little flash rate. Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Happy, good afternoon. Thank you, you as well. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Um, am I, are you wanting me to read through the resolution or oh just God. give a brief input? Yeah, just if you have any presentation uh, uh, in regard, okay. yeah. Go, go okay. ahead. Yep, go All ahead. Right. Um, so as a member of the Literary Arts Committee, which um, used to be under the umbrella of and now is under Pablo uh, Center for the Arts, or Pablo. Um, 
and a member of the Writer in Residence Search Committee, I wanted to first acknowledge the fantastic work that our past writers and residents have done, bringing opportunities for writers to improve their craft and readers to discover a wealth of stories. So those would be Bruce Taylor, Max Garland, and Karen Loeb, and they've all really made their mark on the local writing scene, and we are just incredibly grateful for their time and talent. And also as the programming librarian at Ellie Phillips Memorial Public Library, it's been my privilege and my pleasure to work with each of these folks as well as the next appointee, and I have great hopes for what Ken will bring to the position. Thank you, Ms. Small, very much. Um, is there any questions from council? Council Member Christofferson. Thank you, President Weld. I read the uh, job description with some interest and I am simply wondering uh, when the community and or the council might hear what the goals are of this particular writer in residence. Ms. Small? Ms. Small? Ms. Small, are you there? Yes, yes. Did, were you able Sorry, to hear uh, the question? The, um, I could, um, but I believe that he is also on the call and he may be, may be able to answer that better than I can. Ken, are you there? Mr. Shemansky, are you there? Ken, are you there? Hello? Hello? He may not be available. Um, so what I do know, I don't have it in front of me, but I do re recall from his um, application, there was an application process, uh, that he's particularly excited about um, integrating songwriting and um, music and, and spoken word um, together. So I know that's a particular passion of, of his. Um, and normally we would have already had a few more conversations about, you know, initial projects and such. Um, but just due to the, the COVID crisis, that's, that's not something that we've tackled just yet, so. Thank you, Ms. Small. Are there any other questions from council? I don't see any other questions. Thank you again very much. On a motion then by Council Vice President Emanuel and seconded by Council Member Beaton, or Berge, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Council Member Gregor. Council Member Gregor. Thank you, President Weld. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, President Well, and thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Small. Um, yeah, I certainly want to show my support for, for this choice of the committee um, for writer in residence. I, I uh, first met Mr. Szymanski when he was uh, advising the uh, school newspaper at South Middle School over 15 years ago and wrote, um, volunteered with Volume 1 to write um, with him as well, uh, and certainly think he would add a lot of Kind of wit and wisdom to um, our community, um, especially during this time when we could maybe uh, use some some more literary, uh, lighthearted <laughs> um, you know, ways of looking at at uh, the world. So, so yeah, I just wanted to show my support for this choice. Thank you, Councilmember Gregert. Any other discussion? 
in regards to this agenda item. Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Christofferson. Aye. Emmanuel. Aye. Gregert. Aye. Klinkhammer. Aye. Lohr. Aye. Weld. Aye. Worthman. Aye. Zhang. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Beaton. Aye. Berge. Aye. We try Councilmember Worthman again. Worthman. Aye. Aye. Thank you. And that passes unanimously. Agenda item number 12 is a resolution approving a settlement of claimed excessive property tax assessments for Chippewa Valley Partners doing business as Walmart Stores Incorporated. Uh, Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick. Thank you, Thank you Council President Weld and members of the City Council. Uh, next slide, please. The city's been defending an excessive uh, tax claim brought by the property owners of Walmart, uh, the Gateway Drive property, uh, for tax years 2017, 2018, and 2019. The assessed uh, fair market valuation of that property for those years is, as indicated on this slide, of $12.6 million. Uh, Walmart. Uh, was required uh, by scheduling order and city discovery to produce an expert opinion uh, to support its opinion of value and produced an opinion claiming uh, a value of only $5.6 million. However, through uh, a series of settlement negotiations, uh, the two parties uh, are proposing and Walmart or the owners of the Walmart property have agreed to a settlement with a modest adjustment uh, agreeing to a fair market value assessment for those three years of just over $12 million, or $12,053,000, which equates to $60 per square foot. Uh, that valuation uh, sits uh, in the middle of a number of valuations that we have throughout the community for other large uh, commercial retail properties, and most notably uh, is bracketed well by the recent uh, adjustment and settlement to the Menards claims uh, that the city has approved. Uh, this is, uh, however, still a downward adjustment of that uh, assessed valuation and results in a refund that the city under state law is obligated to pay. Over the three years, the total uh, refund that you'd be authorizing with this resolution is uh, just over $34,000, as again shown on the slide that should be on your screen, or about uh, $12,000 per year. Uh, the city uh, is allowed to charge back uh, the portions of those taxes that are attributable to other local taxing entities. Uh, they would also uh, have, you know, the modest uh, adjustments uh, to their uh, tax revenue uh, over these uh, three years at issue. Again, as I indicated, the valuation is consistent with other like properties, which is a constitutional obligation we have to keep uh, property valuations uniform within the city. And it concludes, if approved by council, by your action today, I would uh, conclude the litigation that's pending in Eau Claire Circuit Court for those uh, years, and I recommend it for your consideration. Any questions, happy to try to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Nick. Are there any questions from council? I don't see any. Thank you again. On a motion then by Councilmember Worthman and seconded by Councilmember Gregert, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Emanuel. Aye. Gregert. Aye. Clinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Zhang? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. 
And that item passes unanimously. Agenda item number 13 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an addendum to the memorandum of understand <clears throat> understanding with Merge LLC for joint construction of a transit center, transit transfer center and residential housing. Again, Mr. Nick. President Weld and council members, uh, this item relates to the Transit Transfer Center uh, development project. Uh, again, I have a short PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. Again, a project that we're all very excited about and I think have heard about in the past. Uh, it involves uh, a joint um, arrangement with Merge Urban Development as uh, represented by a memorandum of it understanding or MOU that uh, the parties originally entered into uh, last October and have extended once already. It is supported by a federal TIGER grant uh, uh, of $5 million that will support the city's public investment in this project of a substantially upgraded uh, transit transfer center at the current location on Farwell Street. But in addition to that, uh, you know, bring online what we hope to be approximately 80 residential uh, units in our downtown that uh, will be affordable housing units, hopefully supported uh, with WIDA LIHTC grant, uh, as you heard earlier, uh, uh, was done for the Cannery Trails uh, project underway uh, over on uh, the West Bank or Cannery District. Uh, the uh, uh, housing and structured uh, a parking component and discussions of them and how to design them have been ongoing uh, for the better part of a year and continue to be ongoing and have been positive between the city and MERGE um, and had uh, positive discussions with MERGE's representatives earlier today. Uh, however, uh, you know, a lot of things are, are changing and in flux uh, for us all during uh, the uh, current health emergency and it is advisable for both uh, parties to have a little bit more time on this. Uh, next slide if you could. Uh, so uh, again just a little bit more information about the outline of the project and we anticipate these type of investments uh, to still be what uh, all the parties expect. So we expect it to be a substantial private investment of uh, potentially in excess of $17 million, a substantial valuation, and uh, really a, a positive project uh, all around, uh, but one that probably will take a little bit more time than any of us would have preferred uh, for it to actually uh, begin construction and be completed. Uh, next slide. The uh, extension that uh, I've discussed with uh, Ms. Henneman from Merge is for a 45-day extension that would uh, take this out uh, beyond your first council meeting in June. Uh, we would certainly bring something back to you that would be a next step agreement uh, as soon as possible and hopefully by either your second meeting in May or your first in June. Uh, they are conducting a, a review of all their projects that have not commenced but are in the pipeline and are, uh, remain committed to this project, uh, but need uh, further time to review their financials again in light of uh, the current health and economic emergency. So the, uh, the resolution before you would simply extend the current MOU with MERGE for 45 days, uh, taking out uh, to again encompass your, uh, up through and including your first meeting in June. Any questions, happy to try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nick. Are there questions from council? I don't see any questions. Thank you. On a motion then by Council Member Anderson and seconded by Council Member Klinkhammer, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Council Vice President Emanuel. Thank you, Council President. Um, I wanna lift up this important policy um, effort that's being made and I know that we live in a time right now where even significant news like UFOs, photos being released is not really um, on the radar, um, just given everything else. But this is very much on our community's radar to continue the diligence of building not only a modern transfer uh, 
station, but a place where our community can come together, can live, can um, find some type of utility with the building that will be there. And so I, I'm really pleased to see that we're continuing to talk about this um, item and to be diligent and patient, um, knowing that this has been a project for almost 36 years. We are not giving up on this and we're continuing to move forward. Thank you, Council Vice President. Any other discussion in regards to this agenda item? I don't see any. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Gregert? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Zhang? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. And that item passes unanimously. Agenda item number 14 is a resolution approving an agreement for the expansion of the Chippewa Valley Regional Computer Forensic Laboratory. Ms. Thompson, good afternoon. Good afternoon, can you hear me? We can. Okay, great. Uh, this resolution would approve an agreement between the Eau Claire Police Department, the Eau Claire County Sheriff's Office, and the Department of Justice to share in construction costs related to the expansion of the Chippewa Valley Regional Computer Forensic Lab. The costs are split based on the number of full-time investigators per member agency, and the expansion is necessary due to the growth of the lab since its creation in 2010. The expansion would increase the workstations from five to nine and allow for lab functions that were displaced out of the lab to come back into the lab. Uh, and this project was also included as part of the 2020 capital improvement plan and uh, it assumed a shared cost as part of that as well. Um, and then I can take it uh, questions if there are any. Are there any questions for Ms. Thompson? Councilmember Emanuel? No, oh, I'm really sorry. I gotta get better with my hand. I do uh, apologize. No, no problem. Are there any other questions for Ms. Thompson? I don't see any. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, on a motion then by Councilmember Beaton and seconded by Councilmember Zhang, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Klinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Zhang? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. Aye. Gregert. Aye. And that item passes unanimously. Agenda item number 15 is a resolution canceling the city council meeting scheduled for Monday, May 25th, 2020. Uh, city Manager Peters, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Council President Reld and members of the city council. So May 25th of Monday is Memorial Day, and although we will likely all be celebrating it slightly differently than we have in the past. Um, it has certainly been the custom of the council when this happens to cancel the Monday night meeting. Uh, at this point, we are not aware of any items that would require uh, the Monday night uh, you know, public hearing. Um, and so uh, the resolution before you would cancel the Monday meeting on the 25th of May, but you would still have your regular business meeting on Tuesday the 26th. Any questions from council? Councilmember Christofferson. Thank you, President Weld. Uh, Mr. Peters, I'm, I'm just curious if there should be something that feels somewhat emergent to um, a resident um, that would need to come in front of the council. Is there anything about having a public hearing before the legislative meeting? Um, 
the we, we would work through that you know on a case by case basis um, you know it, it the more typical thing might be something that would require a closed session yeah. and so okay. you know uh, occasionally we have uh, if, if we know with some reasonable certainty how long that's going to take or the scope of the issue you know we've put that before the meeting not our preference to do that mm -hmm. but we have been able to do that and uh, like I said the the things that would normally queue up uh, through the plan commission um, are working out in such a way that we know that there's none of those coming Thank forward on the. On Thank the you, 25th. Mr. Peters. Yep. Any other questions from council? I don't see any. Thank you, Mr. Peters. On a motion then by council member Lohr and seconded by council member Christofferson, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Lohr? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Jean? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. Gregert? Aye. Clinkhammer. Aye. And that item passes unanimously. Agenda item number 16 is a resolution extending the emergency declaration in the city of Eau Claire. Does council have any questions for city manager Peters from his earlier presentation? Seeing none, on a motion then by Council Vice President Emmanuel and seconded by Council Member Berge, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Weld? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Jean? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. Gregert? Aye. Clinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. And that item passes unanimously. We have three ordinances for introduction. Uh, agenda item number 17 is an ordinance rezoning a property located at 2113 Brack Avenue from R1 to C3P and to adopt the general development plan with site plan for an office with warehouse. Agenda number 18 is an ordinance rezoning property located at the southwest corner of Jeffers Road and Prairie Lane from C2 to R3P and to adopt the general development plan for multifamily apartment buildings and then agenda item 19 is an ordinance rezoning property located at the southeast corner of West Fine Street and Rosewood Lane from TR1A to R1. Does council wish to suspend the rules and take up any of these three ordinances this evening? Seeing no such interest, uh, we will then go to announcements. Uh, City Manager Peters. Thank you, Council President Weld and members of the City Council. The only announcement tonight is really to, a little bit around the uh, Council orientation. And we had previously scheduled the Council orientation for the morning of uh, May 14th and the afternoon of May 20th. Um, it's two uh, multi-hour uh, training sessions for the Council and orientation. Um, we're thinking at this point, uh, since there's only one council member, uh, Council Member Zhang, who has not been through that uh, process and it might be a little cumbersome and, and uh, uh, to, to, to do the orientation online with a larger group, that perhaps we would uh, do a, a, a customized orientation for uh, the new council member Zhang um, and then forego the group training session on the, uh, on the 14th to the 20th. But we're open to, uh, to feedback on that and ideas, but at this point we're, we're looking at possibly canceling that orientation for the 14th and the 20th. So if any of you as individuals have some feedback for me on that, uh, we can certainly take that into consideration 
as we we're making our decision there. But all of you have been through it at least once, if not more than once, and, uh, it, and much of the material is repeated. Uh, but it is, a, it is an important uh, process, certainly for new council members. Unfortunately, it's also an opportunity for the new council members to interact with and meet and, and, you know, um, and work with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the more seasoned or experienced council members, but that would be challenging in an online environment anyway. So um, that's our thought process, and that's really my only announcement for you tonight. Thank you, City Manager Peters. Are there any other announcements from council? Council Member Klinkhammer. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Considering the uh, generous wages that, or honorarium that this gentleman would have, I think it might be appropriate if uh, we would send her a letter, send a letter of appreciation to Mr. Shemansky for his passion for our community and his willingness to uh, volunteer for this. Certainly. Thank you. Any other announcements? Councilmember Anderson. Um, thank you. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to hear Councilmember Klinkhammer's announcement. Um, would you mind repeating that? Uh, condensing it down, I'd like to send a letter of, you know, on behalf of the council to our uh, uh, writer, what's the official title? In Ken Shemansky. In residence. Our writer in residence, yes. Did you hear that? Uh, yeah, thanks. And it was just to express our appreciation. Is that? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, great. That sounds like a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Seeing none, if there is no objection from council, we are adjourned. Everyone there will take five minutes. Uh, to take a break. If you could all stay online, it would be greatly appreciated uh, as far as council members go. And those that, from the public that wish to share in our work session, uh, you're also welcome to listen in. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between Newsworks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, P.O. Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin 54702-1.